to the lesson 12 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson, we will basically study flow meters. As you know, uh, the three basic I mean, process parameters are pressure, temperature and flow. However, if you look at the uh, number of sensors available or the varieties of the uh, varieties of the particular process parameters like pressure, temperature is much less compared to the flow. The reason is that the flow you will find, I mean not only the, uh, the type of liquid flowing through the pipe or it also basically depends on the what type of liquid is flowing. So, depending on that there are various types of flow meters available and used in the process industry. There are sometimes there are volumetric flow, there are sometimes mass flow, there is sometimes positive displacement flow, there is open channel measurement, there is a closed channel measurements. So, depending on this all the circumstances, the number of I mean, the flow meters are the highest among the all the process uh, uh, parameters if you look at. Now, in this lesson basically we will discuss uh, some the contents of this lesson rather is the flow meters. We will just give the uh, name of the different flow meters, then we will discuss in details the differential pressure flow meter. Flow transmitter also we will discuss in some brief and also we will show a I mean separate uh, the separate um, video on the flow transmitter. And now commonly used flow meters are like this. We have differential pressure flow meter, then we have uh, variable area meters. Now in the differential pressure flow meters we will find we have basically uh, or most commonly used orifice meter and venturi meter, then we have elbow meter, then we have pitot tube, these are all basically depends on the differential pressure. We have variable area meters, one of the variable area meters is the rotameter, which is a, uh, very commonly used in the process to get a rough estimate of the flow measurements. Then we have positive displacement meters and uh, positive displacement meters is a meter by which it is uh, you can get the uh, not exactly the flow velocity, but the uh, quantity uh, amount quantity of liquid flowing in a particular situation. So, one of the common example of the positive displacement meters in the gas stations or petrol pump. If you go to the petrol pump and take some amount of uh, petrol or diesel whatever it may be, you will find that uh, actually I am not interested in the flow rate, I am interested in the total quantity of the liquid. So, that type of situations we need positive displacement meter. Then we have a turbine flow meters, uh, which is directly electrical output you will get from the turbine flow meters. We have electromagnetic flow meters, it has also has some relative advantages and disadvantages. You will find the electromagnetic flow meters is very good because if there is no obstructions and all those things will be discussed later on. We have voltage shading flow meters, flow meters. Then we have ultrasonic flow meters, well using the ultrasonic sounds we are measuring the uh, flow and it is basically non invasive and it is uh, like a electromagnetic flow meter. It has also, uh, uh, it does not create any pressure loss, but if you look at the other like differential pressure meters, even though it is used extensively in the process, you will find it there is a permanent pressure loss in the, in the pipe. We have cross correlation flow meters also, these are the all the I am glimpses I am the, of the flow meters available. Um, in common or commonly used in the uh, any anywhere I mean like the municipality water supply or the chemical plant or steel plant everywhere you will find this type of flow meters. We have also lesser Doppler flow meters. Now if I look at the closed channel meters you will find that I will just give in the glimpse I have not I have, I have not come exactly to the uh, I mean in details of the crime uh, exactly the text of this our um, particular this lesson. Now, closed channel meters, if that means the closed pipe I am interested to measure the flow. In that type of situations, we have uh, 
uh, obviously we will uh, mostly use the differential flow meters and differential uh, pressure flow meters we have two venturi meters and orifice meters this we will do discuss in very much details right we have variable area flow meters as i discussed uh, this is also closed channel meters and it is a rotameter one is one of the good example of the closed channel meters i mean variable area flow meters which is used in the closed channel then in open channel meters in some situations we need we need to measure the open channel like one of the good example is the is the irrigation purposes if you i want to amount if you want to know the flow of the fluid okay velocity of the fluid by which we can calculate the total quantity of the liquid is used for the irrigation in that type of situations it is open channel so in that open channel meters we have uh, basically uh, two types one it is the weirs we have a V notch wears and rectangular wears and we have also pitot tube. Now, pitot tube is basically it can be used is a basically used for the gases and, and gases clean gases rather and it can be used for both open channel and closed channel that is the advantage of the pitot tube. But however, in this particular lesson we will discuss basically this differential pressure flow meters others will be like variable energy meters vs pitot tube will be discussed in the subsequent lessons. Now, total quantity of liquid is obviously what is that? That is the time integral of flow rate. If I measure the time and multiply by the flow rate, if the flow rate is uniform or average, so if you multiply by time, I will get total quantity of liquid flowing in a three particular cross sections. Now, at the end of this lesson, the viewer will know the principle of operation of a differential pressure flow meter, orifice meter, venturi meter discharge coefficient of a venturi meter or orifice meter, then pressure tappings, there are various pressure tappings available that will be discussed, pipe bending near the differential pressure flow meters because whenever you are using any differential pressure flow meters, there is a restrictions of the pipe bendings both upstream and downstream that you must look at, right. Then pressure recovery because you see the differential pressure flow meters, there is a loss of, there is a permanent pressure loss and permanent pressure loss means the pumping extra pumping cost. So, that you have to take care and this is very crucial in the case of uh, any uh, water supply and all this thing because pumping needs a lot of uh, money involved. So, that the whatever you are supplying the water or uh, other things the cost will be increased. Now, now what is the need of flow meters in the process? First of all you know we know that flow meters is necessary for the I mean for suppose in the, in the water supplies flow meter is necessary because I know how much quantity of liquid or water I am supplying to the um, particular um, town or city that is one thing, but what is the need actually in the process. Measurement of the volumetric flow rate and mass flow rate are necessary for the purpose of determining the proportions of materials introduced to a process and the amount of materials produced in the process, right. Measurement of volume flow rate you look at. Now, differential pressure flow meters comes under this. They are most widely used flow meters for liquids and gases. A restriction, a restrictions or constriction is placed in the pipe and the differential pressure developed across the restriction is measured. As simple as that, it is very simple I mean principles just applying Bernoulli's equations you can find the flow rate. And the differential pressure output is calibrated in terms of volume flow rate. So, that differential pressure is calibrated in terms of volume flow rate, then we are converting into the current and all those things that will be taken care later on. Now, you see this is a typical differential pressure flow meters, the schematic of the differential pressure flow meters we can see here. You see, if I look at, I do not know which, um, fine, this I can take. You see here, uh, this is a pipe liquid is flowing through these directions. Liquid is flowing through this direction, it is coming out this direction, clear? And you see there is a restriction, this is our restriction, okay, in the form of orifice. It is basically a circular plate, please note, okay, there is a hole in the, a concentric hole in the middle, a circular plate. So, liquid is flowing through this plate, so liquid is coming and it is flowing through like this one. Okay. Clear? So, it will not be exactly like this one. So, let me go back again. So, so it will look like this one. So, the liquid will flow and there is a minimum pressure area after that. So, it will go 
and after that liquid will flow like this one. Clear? Now, the area of cross section in the upstream C we are taking A 1, area cross sections of the um, restrictions of the constrictions is A 2. P 1 is we are measuring the upstream pressure tap, we are calling it upstream pressure tap, P 2 is the downstream pressure tap, P 2 is the downstream pressure tap, P 1 is the upstream pressure tap and Z 1 and Z 2 is a, is, a, is a height of this central point of this area of cross section of the pipe as well as of the at the point of measurements of upstream pressures as well as the um, orifice, uh, orifice plate. right? So, we are uh, making it Z 1 and Z 2. Let us go back. Now, if I apply the Bernoulli's equation across these two I mean, I mean sections will upstream and downstream easily I can write P 1 by rho 1 plus V 1 square by 2 plus Z 1 into Z equal to P 2 by rho 2 plus V 2 square by 2 plus Z 2 G. So, you need you can see all the dimensions are equal it is all are uh, it is a meter per second square in units of the individual. So, it is a we have taken it per unit mass. So, we can write this Bernoulli's equation like this right total height I mean total height of the liquid at any point is same that is the basic principle. P is the pressure in Newton per meter square, V is the average velocity in meter per second, V 1 is the upstream velocity and V 2 is the velocity at the restrictions or the minimum area and rho is the fluid density which is kg and meter cube everything in SI no problem. A is a cross sectional area it is in meter square and Z is the elevation above the dotum level. Okay. So, you can take any dotum level. So, obviously, this is not very important if the pipe is horizontal and that is in meter. So, the following assumptions have been made in calculating the volume flow. So, you have to make some simple assumption to calculate the volume flow rate these are the flow is frictionless it means there is no loss of energy due to friction either in the fluid itself or between the fluid and the pipe walls. There is no heat losses or gains due to heat transfer between the fluids and its surroundings. There is conservation of total energy pressure kinetic and potential we have written the Bernoulli's equation from that only right. So, it is nothing new. So, there is conservation of total energy pressure plus kinetic plus potential at any point of the liquid. The fluid is incomprehensible, incomprehensible. So, it is rho 1 equal to rho 2 equal to rho, right. So, that the density is same everywhere and the pipe is horizontal that means, z 1 equal to z 2. So, it means that the equation 1 reduces to v 2 square minus v 1 square upon 2 equal to p 1 minus p 2 by rho. Now, conservation of the volume flow rate if it is there. So, we can write q 1 equal to q 2 equal to q that means, q 2 q 1 is the upstream flow volumetric flow rate, q 2 is the downstream I mean, I mean downstream volumetric flow rate. Also, we know q 1 equal to a 1 into v 1, v 1 is the area of cross sections of the pipe and v 1 is the pipe and the fluid and liquid flow diameter flow velocity, q 2 is the uh, downstream flow velocity obviously, q 1 will be equal to q 2 this will be the equal to the area of cross section of the orifice multiplied by the velocity of the liquid at the orifice. Obviously, if the uh, P 1 is greater than P 2 that will come in the next slides let us go to the next slide. So, since A 2 is less than A 1 it follows that V 2 will be greater than V 1 and P 2 will be less than P 1 right. Since A 2 less than A 1 it follows that the V 2 will be that is obvious from the last equation V 2 will be greater than V 1 and that means, the flow velocity at the restriction or at the, at the at the minimum area of cross section is high okay, compared to the actual flow velocity right. We are not interested in that we are ex exactly interested in the volumetric flow rate that is same both in the upstream and downstream. Therefore, the theoretical value of the volume flow rate in a differential pressure flow meters in the both in the case of uh, Venturi and orifice is that q theoretical we are writing is a 2 upon under the square root 1 minus a 2 upon a 1 square under the square root 2 p 1 minus p 2 by rho this is equation number 2. The theoretical value of the volume flow rate always differs from the actual flow rate due to two main reasons. There is some restriction why I am calling it theoretical we will find that they, they have to multiply by some discharge coefficients to create the actual flow rate okay, actual volumetric flow rate. The frictionless flow is never occurred in pipe it is true for turbulent flows in a smooth pipe 
where friction losses are small. The laminar and turbulence flows are characterized by the Renault number and a Renault number is given as Re equal to V d p by eta. Okay, this will give you the Renault number, where d is the pipe diameter, eta is the viscosity of the fluid flowing in the pipe, v is the velocity of the fluid in the pipe and p is the differential pressure across the section of the pipe. Right? Number 2 is A1 and A2 are the cross sectional areas of the pipe and the restriction respectively. The cross sectional area of the pipe is pi d square by 4 obviously and the cross sectional area of the meter or if it is meter or venturi meter it is pi d square by 4 where d and capital D and small d are the respective diameters that means pipe diameter internal pipe diameters and this is the diameters of the orifice or the throat diameter of the venturi. If the fluid fills the pipe then A1 equal to pi d square by 4. However, the area of the minimum cross sectional area will be not exactly at the at the restrictions. So, it will be 0 0.99 pi d square by 4 for a venturi meter because venturi is, a, is not a sudden I mean uh, restrictions. However, the orifice plate is a sudden restriction which causes the fluid cross sectional area to have minimum value of 0 0.6 pi d square by 4 at, at the vena contractor. That means, it is little uh, far off from the little off from the orifice plate where you will get the minimum area of the cross section of the fluid right. Therefore, the theoretical expression of volume flow rate is corrected as C we are introducing a new factor C under the square root 1 minus beta 2 to the power 4 multiplied by A 2 under the square root 2 P 1 minus P 2 by rho. Where C is the discharge coefficient and beta is the flow meter pipe diameter ratio small d by capital D and A2 is the flow meter cross sectional area, it is equal to pi d square by 4. Values of the discharge coefficient depends on type of flow meter that is orifice or venturi, Renault number Re, diameter ratio beta. So, therefore, for a given flow rate flow meter I can write C equal to is a function, C is a function of Re, Renault number and beta. Values of C are found experimentally for several types of flow meters over a wide range of fluid velocities right, because flow meter C velocity should be C should be known to you. For a given fluid and known volumetric rate of fluid flow C can be found from the equation 3. If the fluid um, volumetric rate of the fluid is known, uh, so obviously I can and if the density of the fluid is known, so obviously I can found, find the value of C. Now, general features of the differential pressure flow meters, what are the general features? Let us look at these are most important, that is the reason it is used widely for in the industry for last several decades. Number one, it has no moving parts, okay. You look at there is no moving parts, so it is robust, reliable, and easy to maintain and widely established. It is established over the years, it is documented, data are available. So, all these thing, all these supports we are getting from the I mean, past users, so that is the reason it is used widely in the industry. Number 2, there is always a permanent pressure loss and extra pumping energy, this is not a good feature, this is a bad feature so obviously. So, there is always a permanent pressure loss and the extra pumping energy is necessary to overcome it. So, whenever there is a permanent, uh, permanent pressure loss, I have to need some extra pumping energy. So, obviously, this pumping energy needed in the case of orifice beta is more than that of the uh, that of the venturi because venturi the permanent pressure loss is much less. Now, let us look at you see it very carefully. So, you see here that if I look at the from this one. So, you see I am this is our pipe uh, 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 this is the distance from the orifice we are taking orifice or venturi throat. Here you see at the uh, differential pressure measured here there is a sudden fall of the differential pressure near the orifice. Okay. After that, we are this pressure loss is it is pressure. So, this is a pressure recovery. There is a sudden pressure loss. This is good for measurements. So, wider the pressure loss, if it is temporary, that is good for measurement because we are getting we can our sensitivity of our instrument will be higher. Because if you see here, the pressure loss should be always uh, will be higher and higher here, pressure drop or differential pressure should be higher and higher because in that case what is the what is our input input is the flow and output is the differential pressure so differential pressure by flow if it is higher and higher obviously that is better for us because static sensitivity will be increased in this case right but you see 
this should not be permanent that is the problem with the orifice meter. So, you see there is a permanent pressure loss that will never recover. So, I need extra pumping energy to overcome this pressure loss right. So, this is most important right. You see this is a permanent pressure loss say this is a temporary pressure loss we are measuring at this point preferably then there is a permanent pressure loss right. Now, both Venturi and orifice meter is nonlinear. this is most important. If you see volumetric flow rate is proportional to the square root of the pressure differential right. So, this limits the useful range of a meter in between 25 and 100 percent full scale output reading. At lower flows the differential pressure measurements is below 6 percent of full scale output reading and is not accurate enough for the measurement. Now, you see there. So, useful range here you see it is a nonlinear curve. So, because you can see that the uh, flow velocity or the quantitative um, uh, flow uh, volumetric flow rate is, is, is proportional to the square root of the uh, uh, differential pressure. So, obviously, it is nonlinear you can see here that the, if the flow velocity is less than 25 percent of the uh, full scale output rating if the full scale output rating is there 25 percent of the full scale output rating. So, the whatever the measurements we are uh, doing that is much erroneous right. So, it is not very good for the low flow measurements it is good for the higher flow measurements that means the, the error will be less in this case right. This is the error you can see here excuse, uh, excuse me. So, error you see here error here is uh, quite low at the uh, low flow velocity uh, quite uh, low at the um, at the high flow velocity and uh, is very high when the, the flow velocity is uh, or volumetric flow rate is low. Number 4, it can be used for turbulent flows because turbulent flow is characterized by when R e is much uh, is greater than 10 to the power 4, 10,000. A typical flow meter system consists of the differential pressure sensor, differential pressure transmitter, data equation systems and a PC. The transmitter gives a current output signal, uh, current output signal of 4 to 20 milli ampere and the dash consists of an amplifier, I 2 V converter and ADC. Right, this is our system you see differential pressure sensing element and transmitter, data equation systems and PC. Please note that the this differential pressure transmitter should be an assembly or it is to be installed in the on the pipe itself just outside the pipe and it should give you 4 to 20 milli ampere of current which will go to the computers so which where the data equation card is there. So, through which will convert to the voltage domain and will be used for further processing after conversion to the and I mean digital domain because this 4 to 20 milli ampere of current is obviously is an analog uh, current right. Now, let us go to the um, instrumentation lab and look at one of the transmitters one of the differential pressure transmitters used extensively in the industry. Uh, as you know that in the flow measurements actually the uh, flow is calibrated in terms of pressure. So, in all flow meters I mean uh, I am talking about the, the variable area like orifice meter and venturi meter. So, there is the upstream pressure tap and downstream pressure tap. We have seen in the class that uh, we have shown on manometer sort of thing by which I am measuring the pressure. But unfortunately, in the process actual process I need some instrument uh, or some equipment which will uh, give some signal that will be transmitted to the control room. Now, for that reasons we need some electrical output. So, what they do in this uh, case of this differential pressure transmitter because there are two diff uh, pressure tap uh, one is upstream pressure tap and another is down downstream pressure tap. Now, you can see here uh, this is basically a capacitive uh, type uh, DP transmitter here we have a upstream pressure tap and here you can see the downstream pressure tap. So, you have to can open it and you can connect the upstream tip pressure tap here. So, inside what we have, we have a uh, capacitors with the movable plates so, and the inside of the two capacitors are plated with some metal. Uh, so, you will get once the capacitor, suppose this side is high and this side is low, the capacitors movable plate will move on this side. So, I will get a push pull uh, sort of uh, variations of the capacitance which can be calibrated uh, and in terms of pressure and ultimately that will be calibrated in terms of flow. Now, uh, this is basically these capacitive sensors inside and there is measurement circuits and signal conditioning circuits are here on this side. You can see here if I open.
there is a uh, connection for the signals. You see here that we have positive signals because the in the process the output is 4 to 20 milliampere and the supply voltage maximum is 45 volt DC supply because in all the process as you know it's uh, you cannot give the supply voltage much higher that is also not necessary and it will give the according to the variation first of all this uh, um, uh, this circuit will first measure the variation of that capacitance and that variations of the capacitance will be converted in terms of current 4 to 20 milliampere of current. So ultimately that's 4 to 20 milliampere of current will be calibrated in terms of flow and the output signal we can take from this side we can open this side and see here. Okay, we have the circuitry and we can connect here and there is a some things here and this side you can make the, all the connections uh, sort of thing for taking the um, both the giving the signal and taking the 4 to 20 milliampere of current. This circuitry which we this this actually the PCB which you can take it out for making a repairment and all that type of job. So now we will discuss uh, a particular, we already we discussed the orifice and venturi, but there is some difference between the orifice and venturi meters and also we will discuss that like dull tube and flow nozzle all those things. So let me first discuss the orifice meter which is I think uh, if you look at the flow meters it is most widely used flow meters in the process industry. I should say 80 percent of the flow meters are the orifice. If you look at the, if you compare to the number of meters like uh, so many meters we have discussed at the beginning. Uh, sophisticated meters all these things, but orifice because it is established over the years, this is the one of the very widely used cheap easily replaceable uh, meters and quite reliable also that is most important thing. Maintenance is also very easy, just replace it, it does not need, may I need uh, calibrations. Once you have uh, made several orifice of the from the same lathe machines, I mean it will not take, I mean just you do not need if the diameter ratios are correct, it is small d by capital D is same as before if it is square edge orifice, so there is no question of making any further calibration. That is a great advantage of it. So during routine maintenance just replace the orifice that will simplify. If you look at the other meters, it is it needs a lot of it is expensive also. So among the differential pressure flow meters, orifice is the cheapest. Let us go back to the orifice. Now it is a thin plate square edge orifice is the most widely used differential pressure flow meters. So thin plate number all square edge orifice is the most widely used differential pressure flow meter in process environment mainly because of its simplicity, low cost and moreover it is well established over the years and the data are, data are available for its behavior. That is most important thing just you cannot have a new I mean something somewhere I mean in some laboratory in the world has developed some flow meters. So, immediately that cannot be used, okay. it is used over the years and people ultimately our goal is to make our products good, is not it. So, I told you several times before also quality of steel, quality of fertilizer, quality of petrol, diesel, so quantity of life, so if you are giving anywhere, I mean some quality of our drugs which you are producing in the bioreactors. So, it does not matter I mean what type of flow meters you are using, if the product is good, product is pure, so there is no question. So, orifice meters is working for several years of all these reasons and we are using it extensively in the industry. Now typically three types of orifice plates are available, okay. it is basically a plate, okay. if you look at it looks like this you see. So it is a plate here and there is a hole, right. If you look at, so it will be look this square edge orifice, so it should be, if I look at, okay, so liquid is flowing th through this one like this one, clear, right. Let us go back again. So these are the three different types of orifice if you look at, this is a concentric orifice eccentric orifice and segmental orifice all has different applications that is the reason we have plotted like we have given like this. So the concentric orifice is the most widely used placed 
The eccentric and the segmental orifices are employed to measure the flow of the fluids containing solids. In both cases, the bottom of the hole is located in a way when the bottom of the hole is at the same level inside the bottom of the pipe installation. These two orifice plates need separate calibration because the discharge coefficients differ from that of the concentric orifice. Clear? I need separate calibration for this one. Suppose I have a suspended particles, all these things. For that reasons, uh, if you suppose you have some sludges, okay, uh, if you use a concentric orifice, the, all these things will be deposited at the bottom of the pipe. But if you use eccentric orifice, that will be flushed away. So, that is the reason some application for the liquid flow measurements will use concentric orifice, some uh, I mean will use eccentric and in some will use, use a segmental orifice. The concentric orifice plate is installed in the pipe with its hole concentric to the pipe itself. It is a flat metal circular plate made of steel, stainless steel, phosphor bronze like that. Its thickness is only sufficient to withstand the buckling forces caused by the differential pressure exists across the plate. So, so far that it can I mean withstand the uh, differential pressure, so you can use a thin plate, but it should not buckle, then your entire calibrations will go wrong. For that reasons, if you have a larger differential pressure all these things, we have different types of uh, flow measurements, although that also basically depends on the differential pressure flow, I mean differential pressure measurement. Circular hole is made with 90 degree square and sharp edge upstream, okay. It is a 90 degree that I have shown you and sharp edge upstream. The change of sharp edge will modify the discharge coefficient of the orifice meter and it is advisable to replace the orifice during the routine maintenance of the plan for better accuracy and of the measurement. Now, orifice pressure taps, there are various pressure taps available for the orifice. There are usually here in this particular lesson, we will discuss three pressure taps, flange taps. You see there are flange taps, this orifice plate with the flange taps, even though I have drawn like this one, you can see here, but it is actually as I told you earlier also. So, it is I mean not drawn like this one. So, this actually okay. So, square edge like this one right. So, but actually we have plotted like this anyway. Now, it is constructed so that the taps for the measuring differential pressure are integral part of the orifice assembly. It is two the one thing is in the in the, in the orifice, orifice itself you have the pressure tappings itself okay. It is entire assembly available right. The pressure taps are usually located 2.5 centimeter either side of the orifice plate. The advantage of the flange tap is that the entire orifice is assembly is usually replaceable and the pressure taps are accurately <coughs> are accurately located, right. Now we have a orifice plate with D and D by 2 taps. Here you can see that it is upstream is D and up downstream is D by 2 taps. All these are some advantage and disadvantages. Then we have orifice with a vena contactor taps. I am sorry, this will be vena contactor, contractor. So, this will be contractor, vena contractor, sorry, this will be A, vena contractor taps. So, orifice because you know the area of the minimum cross sections does not appear here, it is somewhere away from this one, okay. And we always try to measure there at the area of the vena contractor because the differential pressure will be, will be if the area of cross section is low, the differential pressure will be at that point will be higher, highest. So the e, there is ease of measurements. So our static sensitivity of the sensor will increase. So that is the reason what the people do, uh, because as I told you, the area of the minimum cross section is not here; it is little far away. So this is the tap where I am measuring that the pressure, downstream pressure at the area of the at the place of vena contactor which is the area of the minimum cross section of the fluid flow. It is arranged in a way so that the volume so the downstream pressure tap is located at a variable distance from the orifice right depending on the pipe and the orifice size. The upstream tap is at one pipe diameter and the downstream tap is at the vena contractor. In vena contractor tap, the pressure differential is a maximum for a given flow rate. This is important, okay. At the vena contractor tap, pressure differential is maximum for a given flow rate. So, the pressure differential is as I, I told you repeatedly what is the advantage of that having a large pressure differential, right. 
Now, restrictions of the pipe fittings adjacent to orifice mirror. This is another most important thing practicing engineers must follow. So, that is the restrictions of the pipe fittings adjacent to the orifice mirror. There cannot be pipe fittings, pipe bendings, uh, T's, valves, etcetera, very near to the orifice, uh, both upstream and downstream. What are those? Let us look at details. The discharge coefficient are experimentally determined on straight pipe, right? Now, flow disturbances in the pipeline adjacent to the orifice alter the value of the discharge coefficient. Therefore, elbow, okay, pipe bend, T, valve are not allowed near the orifice meter. Okay. How much near that we must know, otherwise what do you mean by near, in yang that is um, I mean this uh, some you must qu quantify, I mean you cannot say just qualitatively very near or something or very uh, far. There should be no fittings closer to the 5 pipe diameter from the orifice on the downstream. Okay. Same, no bending, no elbow, no valve, no T. There should not be any fittings closer than 20 pipe diameters upstream. Upstream is more restricted, okay, that you can see. If the minimum distance is not feasible, in some situation you will find it is very difficult to achieve that because in the process you will find that the uh, I mean, it is not possible, I mean, to have this pipe bendings everywhere, right. I mean, you cannot avoid because you, there would be some pipe bending. So, in that term situation when the pipe bending is unavoidable, you cannot avoid the pipe bendings, I have to use some flow straighteners, both upstream and downstream, okay. What is those, what are those flow straighteners? The flow straighteners that is clear from this. You see, if the minimum distance is not feasible, especially in the upstream, flow straighteners can be installed and the flow straighteners are bundle of smaller tubes welded inside the pipe. It has the bundle of smaller tubes welded inside the pipe, so it will make the flow straight, so that the, the problem which have which occurred that means due to the pipe bending elbow T can be I mean um, can be minimized by using the flow straighteners. Now, next uh, type of flow meters already we have discussed orifice meter, next type of flow meters are the flow nozzle, dial tube, venturi meter all are same and orifice meter, venturi meter, flow nozzle, dial tube, venturi these are basically same, but uh, um, all are depends on differential pressure measurements. We will discuss one by one flow nozzle, dial tube, then we will discuss in more details the venturi meters because that is widely used for the large flow measurements, large quantity I mean uh, flow of the volumetric flow rate. This is a flow nozzle you can see this is a, is a shape like this one, it is a uh, this is called flow nozzle. We have upstream pressure tap here, downstream pressure tap just above the, at the end of the nozzle outside the pipe, uh, just in uh, here we have a upstream downstream pressure tap, this upstream pressure tap. Here you see this is the, this is our venturi tube, venturi meter is something like this, this is upstream pressure tap, this is a piezometer rings we want to average the pressures. This is a throat tap, okay. instead of downstream we are calling it throat tap, this is area of the minimum cross section, okay. because there is difference of area will be A 1, this is A 1, area of cross section, this is capital D, this is a small d. Okay. So, that ratio will give you the beta, this is a venturi meter and this piezometer rings is as to average the upstream pressure and this is to average the downstream pressure. Now, this is the dull tube. So, we have a pressure, we have pressure tap here P 1 and pressure tap here P 2. So, these are all basically, there are some relative advantage and disadvantage of this type of things. Flow nozzle and dial tube, let us first discuss the flow nozzle and dial tube, compare, then we will discuss the venturi in details. The flow nozzle, venturi tube and dial flow tube have the same principle as the orifice. Okay. Flow nozzle, venturi tube, dial flow tube have the same principle as the orifice, okay. no difference same there is a differential pressures and we will measure the differential pressures, we will calibrate the differential pressure in terms of the volumetric flow rate. So, no difference, so that is same exactly same with the orifice meter and it is a nonlinear. Any differential pressure I mean flow meters are nonlinear, that means the volumetric flow rate is a is a square root proportional to the square root of the differential pressure or if you look at the differential pressure is proportional to the square of the volume flow rate. Dahl tube is a modified venturi tube and it is has a low permanent pressure loss, okay. not low like I mean I mean the venturi tube, but it has a low permanent pressure loss. right? The flow nozzle are more expensive than the orifice meter, but cheaper than the venturi meter, venturi is the most expensive as you know. 
So, the flow nozzle are more expensive than the orifice, but cheaper than the venturi. And it is also a variation of the venturi in which the exit section is omitted. We have do not have an exit section if you look at it very carefully. So, that it is similar to the similar to an orifice with well rounded upstream edge. The upstream tap is about one pipe diameter from the entrance to the nozzle and the downstream tap is made on the pipe opposite to the straight portion of the nozzle that already we have discussed right. We have shown that thing. Flow nozzle are used for because you know that in some situations or there is a high pressures and high velocity sometimes the orifice is not very stable there is a question of buckling and all these things that type of situation we have to use a flow nozzle and we cannot spend that money everywhere I mean to install a venturi meter instead of the orifice meter. So, in that type of situations you can use flow nozzle because it is cheaper than the venturi meter. Flow nozzles are used for high velocity steam flows and it is dimensionally more stable at high temperature velocity than an orifice. This is the most salient features of the flow nozzles that is the reason for high velocity high temperatures we can use this flow nozzle instead of using the orifice meter. And the pressure tapping is also not that difficult. So, you can have upstream pressure tap at the one pipe diameter downstream pressure, pressure tap just at the end of the straight portion. So, just at the end uh, opposite to the end of the uh, straight portion of the pipe is uh, straight portion of the nozzle that will be on the pipe right. The permanent pressure loss in the flow nozzle is same as orifice. So, there is a permanent pressure loss is quite high in the case of orifice meter. So, it is same also in the flow meter. It is the least or minimum in the case of venturi meter right. So, whenever there is a savings of the extra pumping cost you have to consider. So, you must go for venturi meter there is no other alternative. Now, if let us need, let me discuss the venturi meters in details. Venturi meter is an expensive instrument, but offers very good accuracy. It is a, um, I should say one of the most accurate flow meters developed by the mankind. So, it is plus minus 1 percent accuracy. So, you can see that it is quite accurate. It has the lowest permanent pressure loss that I told several times. So, whenever there is a question of permanent pressure loss, so you can go for the uh, this type of sensor. Now, construction of the venturi if you look look at the construct how the venturi actually look like. It is made of cast iron or steel sometimes it is if you have a larger then I need a, it can be made of concrete also ok large volume it can make into concrete made of cast iron or steel. Sometimes the throat portions of the venturi because if you look at the venturi it looks like this is not it. The venturi looks like this. this we are calling it throat of the venturi. So, we have a tap here, we have a tap here you know. So, this is called throat. So, in some uh, application throats are made of uh, separate metals, I mean it is usually made of bronze because it is easily replaceable all those things ok. The main uh, systems these both this and this will be made of cast iron or steel right and th this is all about. The large venturi tube is usually made of concrete because if it is very large, so it is very difficult to make made of cast iron or steel. In that case, we will use for the concrete. Sometimes the throat is made of bronze, as I told you earlier, for easy replaceability. Upstream section has an angle of 20 degree included angle. That means if you look at, so it looks like this. If I take a white page. So, it will look like this that oh, I have to take different colors. So, I am talking of this angle that means if you look at this angle, this angle is 20 degree in the case of venturi and this angle should be 7 degree. In fact, you will find that uh, basically there are two types of venturi. One is for the uh, larger downstream portion 
okay another is the smaller downstream portion you will find that if you if you make this angle even lower your pressure recovery will be also higher so this angle but it takes a large uh, space and all those things for that is the restrictions of the venturi but if you make this one large you will find that your pressure recovery also will be large in fact the pressure recovery in the shorter venturi is less that means the permanent pressure loss will be more in the case of short venturi than the longer standard venturi so if this is large suppose the i mean if you have a deep this type of uh, venturi okay then we have that you will find that the total length might be increased right total length has increased but the thing is that the pressure recovery will be uh, better and the permanent pressure drop also will be less so this is very important upstream section has an angle of 20 degree and downstream section an angle of 7 degree these are all included angle right the pressure taps are this will be i am sorry this will be pressure taps this will be pressure taps pressure taps will be are made of piezometer ring so as to average the measurement around the periphery the diameter ratio small d by capital e for venturi typically lies between 0.25 to and 0.50 okay it has almost no maintenance requirement and its working life is very very long okay so almost absolutely no maintenance which is necessary in the case of uh, in the case of orifice meter special orifice meter you, whenever there is routine maintenance you have to check that uh, whether the square edge section is still square edge okay uh, whether the diameter is exactly remains as small d which we have used for calibration purpose if it is not then you have to replace it usually i mean during the routine maintenance you must maintain exchange this replace those old orifice with a newer one which is not necessary in the case of venturi because this is a permanent this throat made is of steel there is no chance of increasing those uh, throat diameter which is there in that's in the, because if you if you after long use that means if i you look at that the if orifice is what i don't know so you see that we have the if i take a uh, if you take like this one okay so if the, this edge has uh, got a sharp i mean instead of like this one it is getting um, like this one right and this is getting like this one right so the entire calibrations will go wrong so that this this type of situation does not arise they arise in the case of in the arise in the case of the uh, venturi meter that is the great advantage of the venturi meter it is widely used in high flow situations such as municipal water system where large savings of pumping costs are possible due to low permanent pressure loss across it okay usually that type of situations i mean you say if the if you look at the range of this flow meters orifice meter has a larger range than the venturi uh, meter has a larger range than the orifice so there is a two great advantage of the except the cost the main advantages of the this venturi meter is the it is uh, reliable its range is very high very very high compared to orifice any other permanent pressure drop is also very low so keeping all this mind so whenever you are uh, want to use because um, you have to whenever you want to use this type of meters where the uh, accuracy is very important so i have to use this venturi meter there is no other alternative right now the smooth internal shape of the uh, venturi tube means it is unaffected by the solid particles or gases bubbles in flowing fluid and in fact it can measure the flow of liquid containing slurries you see this is very important even though in the case of uh, you'll find that in features also will some uh, flow meters are electromagnetic flow meters and and electromagnetic flow meters are there so where you can use the if the liquid has some suspended particles because since there also there is no obstruction type of things in the venturi also there is no obstructions unlike your orifice meter though both relate both depends on the both the de, um, depends on the differential pressure um, meter you will find differential pressure principle you will find that the 
if the liquid constant is the gaseous bubbles. We have tried, you see that we have seen already discussed in the orifice meter, we have eccentric orifice, we have concentric orifice, we have a segmental orifice, but this uh, does not suffice. In many situations, you will find it does not work. If you have a, until the liquid is clean, it is very difficult to measure with the orifice meter, right. That type of situation does not arise in the case of, and even though I am saying that the okay, and uh, you, you can do it as electromagnetic flow meter, but electromagnetic flow meter is a problem that means and the liquid should have some conductivity level. So, without that, suppose in the case of hydrocarbon industries, you cannot use electromagnetic flow meters because conductivity is very poor there, right. So, that type of situation does not arise in the, um, in the case of venturi meter. It does not matter whether it is a conducting liquid, non, non, not only venturi orifice also, whether it is a conducting liquid or a non conducting liquid, it does not matter, right. So, far there is a differential pressure, I can measure it, right. And since we are not measuring with the manometers, we are using a YouTube manometer, we are using some differential pressure transmitter. So, even though the liquid has some suspended particles, okay, some slurries, it does not affect our pressure measurements, right. Because you are you basically we are using uh, a separate types of I mean capsule type differential pressure transmitter. So, which will send some signals and give to 4 to 20 mm ampere of output. Now, its range is very high, you can see its range is extremely high. It is possible to measure the water flow rate as high as 1.5 into 10 to the power 6 meter cube per hour. No other flow meter will give you this huge range. The dimensions will be quite big, that is I agree. But the thing is this type of high fluid flow rate or the volumetric flow rate will never achieve in any other flow meters. This is very important, right. And this is also please note that this is also needed in some type of situation because in that type of situations you will find that I need a, a flow meters where I need a differential pressure output as well as I need a flow meters where uh, I need a large quantity of the volume flow rate. In that type of situations I have to use the uh, venturi flow meters. So, this is very important for uh, measurements, right. Now, another thing please note in the case of uh, venturi and flow I mean orifice meters. Uh, once you install the advantage of the venturi meter, you cannot you will find that if you go to any process industry, you may find one or two uh, I mean your um, venturi meters, but you will find hundreds of orifice meter because of its easy replaceability. It is very easy to replace it, just take out the um, plate and replace the plate with the of uh, the same diameters and same thickness. So, you do not have to um, and recalibrate your sensor that is if the square edge orifice if the small d is same. So, there is no question of recalibrations and in the case of venturi meter there is no question of that type of calibrations or anything because it is life I say that it is just if there is no wear of the, uh, the surface or the internal surface or if there is no chances of increasing the internal diameters of the pipes. So, there is no question of changing of beta. So, these all these advantages I mean make these two particular flow meters even though we are you will find that there are many uh, different types of flow meters electromagnetic flow meters, we have vortexionic flow meter, ultrasonic flow meters, Doppler flow meters, but this does not used much in the any in the process industry. What we are using actually you will find that uh, this type of signals in, in large I mean this type of sensors that means venturi and flow uh, in large number. Only disadvantage of this type of uh, meter, if you look at that orifice and venturi, you, everywhere you need a transmitter. Okay, I need a transmitter both in the orifice and venturi. I mean, is a, a system, not only a system, because here the output is not electrical. Unlike your turbine flow meters, unlike your electromagnetic flow meters, where the output is direct electrical, it's basically it's a pneumatic output. Okay, uh, which is coming in the case of in the case of uh, or hydraulic outputs which is converted by capacitance change and we are getting a 4 to 10 million ampere of current from the transmitter which is transmitted. But if the electrical output is there either in voltage or current directly that can be transmitted if in the case of voltage will convert to the 4 to 10 million ampere of current and transmit. These are the some advantages of the uh, of the non differential type of flow meters, but whenever differential flow meters. So, we are using it for a quite long many years in the industry. So, it does not matter that the what is the I mean um, how much it is cumbersome. It looks very cumbersome. You have seen already in the when we went to the lab and see these differential pressure transmitters. So, every orifice meter and venturi meter must have that type of things just above the pipe. Okay. So, that should be there. So, if you, there are suppose 500 uh, orifice meters, so we must have 500 transmitter also. 
it does not matter you know exactly when you, you are getting the correct measurements, it is easy ease of maintenance, is, I mean leading all these things if you have this, this type of advantages. Uh, that I mean pushes us I mean to a corner where we have no other um, I mean alternative than using the orifice meters and all the data are available over the years for the all different process industries, all different manufacturing industries. So, this helps us to make the uh, use of this particular type of flow meters. We have discussed only this orifice I mentioned, there are many other flow meters like I told you that this is only two differential pressure flow meters we have discussed in this particular lesson. But please remember, we have also differential flow meters like Peter tube is also differential pro, uh, pressure flow meters, elbow meter is also differential pr pressure flow meters in next sessions which will be discussed. So, this ends the lesson 12 of industrial instrumentation.